I want to welcome everybody to the Amherst Community Chat for February the 11th, Thursday, February the 11th. Um, I see some of you filtering into the room. Thank you for joining us. Today we have Amherst planner Ben Brager. Did I say that right? Mm -hmm. Ben Brager joining us to talk about um, planning projects, but specifically the new um, and upcoming wayfinding science project. Uh, so before I ask him to introduce himself and to go over that, I'm going to allow your town manager, Paul Bachman, a few minutes to give any general updates. Thanks, Brianna. So yeah, there's lots happening in town, um, and I'm glad that Ben is here because this is one of those positive things we get to talk about, the uh, initiative that's been around for a while that we're really kind of excited to see move forward. So um, it's good to have Ben sort of helping advance this. Uh, two big things for us uh, from the town side is, one was the uh, cluster of cases of COVID-19 at the university. Uh, the university has put in a self sequester order to all of its uh, students. So students are being instructed by the university to stay at home. Um, that has obviously created issues for our town because not all students are staying at home. We had a meeting, um, significant input from the state, the Secretary of Education and the Secretary of Health and Human Services um, have been involved with this. They take this very seriously. They call it intrusive oversight because um, uh, of the scale of this uh, cluster. So they, it's an important thing. Um, but I, they, the epidemiologists are following the numbers very closely. They seem to think that the numbers, um, you know, it takes about two weeks to work through a, a cluster of this size. Um, the university and the town, according to the Secretary of Health and Human Services, are doing everything right to be able to address this. So that's the, the sort of good thing that we had. The other piece of, that I want to talk about was the, our vaccination program, which is going on throughout February. Um, initially, we were allocated 100 doses a week. Uh, the state has upped that to 975 doses a week, and our um, vaccinators are able to actually stretch that a little bit further because they're able to get, I think, six doses out of a vial versus five, uh, which helps us get more people vaccinated. We started last week uh, on, was it just last week, Wednesday and Friday um, at the high school, and Wednesday we had a 580 people vaccinated. Um, we learned a lot from that day and we changed things up on Friday. So uh, nobody had to wait outside and, and, and we just, it's working really well. Um, credit to uh, a, a big team of people who put this together, uh, but led by Emma Dragon, our health director. And um, so this is for everybody who's 75 and up and people who are um, in tier or step phase one, uh, which are first responders and things like that. Um, the governor has also opened it up to caretaker, caregivers of uh, people who are 75 and up. So um, we are, this week we are at the Bang Center giving the second dose of the first responders uh, who got the first dose th three weeks ago. So we're delivering doses to them. Next week we're open on Tuesday and Thursday uh, and you can sign up at the, and we'll talk about this more about how to sign up. And we have people, um, answering phones. One of the things we've really committed ourselves to is trying to answer every phone call and return a voicemail if you happen to get voicemail. So our staff at the town hall and our COVID advanced editors and the senior center are all returning lots of calls and talking to people, walking people through. People who have a hard time signing up, we're going to help you sign up. People want to get the vaccine. We want them to get the vaccine. So that's our mission and that's our core mission. It's the most important mission we have is the public's health. So that's where we stand. A little bit longer than I normally talk about, but you know, it's an important topic. Yeah, it, it is very important. And you know, uh, the vaccines, we do have first dose appointments for next Tuesday and Thursday for 75 plus and phase one. You can sign up online. There's still plenty of um, openings. So amherstcovid19.org um, slash vaccine. Um, and if you have a senior in your life that might need help, please assist them or direct them to us. Um, towards the line and email that Paul just referenced. So um, again, I want to remind people before I ask Ben to introduce himself, we encourage and welcome live questions. You can do so by either using the Q&A function and typing in your question or simply raising your hand from the Zoom application. I do see some people join from a phone. You can raise your hand from the phone by pressing star nine. 
So I am going to ask um, Ben Brager to introduce himself, give us a little bit about your uh, your backstory, your education, and then um, we can talk get started with questions on the wayfinding project. Great. Thanks, Brianna. And thanks, Paul. It's great to hear about all the great things the town is doing for the COVID vaccine. It's a quite the effort. Um, and thanks for the opportunity to come on the community chat this week. Um, again, my name is Ben Breger. I'm a planner in the planning department here in the town. Um, I am um, happy to say that I grew up here in Amherst and uh, left, took a little hiatus, went to college in Maine, um, spent a few years in Portland area, and then Lo and behold, ended up coming back to UMass to get my master's as many people who grew up in this area find themselves doing <laughs> um, because it's it's a great deal and you get to live live close by, stay close by to where you grew up and your family and also get a great education at UMass. And um, I graduated in, let's see, May, yeah, just May of 2020. So in the, in the, during the pandemic um, and I was What's fortunate you? What's your degree in? Yep, so I have a uh, dual master's in landscape architecture and in regional planning um, from the uh, landscape architecture and regional planning department at UMass. Uh, great program in the design, new design building at, at the university. Um, and yeah, I was very, very fortunate um, that there was an opening in the planning department with the town um, about January this time last year and was brought on uh, almost a year ago part, on a part-time basis. And then when I graduated in May, started ramped up full-time in June 1st. And wow, hit the, certainly have hit the ground running, no shortage <laughs> of projects, um, especially when you come in in the middle of a public health crisis, economic crisis, lots of work to do with help mitigate those effects and th think about the recovery. So, um, you know, I think the uh, planning department and planning department always jokes that I, uh, you know, I came in during quite a surreal time. Um, and especially with the uh, everything going on to Zoom, you know, that was somewhat natural to me because that's how I finished my grad program was everything was remote. And so it wasn't too much of a learning curve, but um, it's been, that's been another whole hurdle to get over is running all the public meetings online and kind of not having that face-to-face -face contact, but it's been it's been a wild ride and I'm very excited to be here and get to work on exciting projects like the uh, like the wayfinding signs. Great, Ben, thank you for that introduction. And I have to echo, that was not an easy time to graduate no. <laughs> last year. So well done. And we're so glad that you were able to join our team. Um, so for the folks who do not know what the wayfinding project is, can you give a quick couple sentence description about what it is before we launch into a little bit of the background of that project? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So the wayfinding signs, the wayfinding project is basically uh, the goal are to place signs throughout the town, basically to let people know, first let people know they've entered Amherst. Um, and also once they're in Amherst to direct people to various destinations within the town, specifically within town center, but also um, the town as a whole. The, the idea, so it, it's, it has a few different dimensions. It's both a way to help people navigate to the town and within the town. It's also to help with economic development to point out key destinations and business areas. And then also it's a kind of a sense of um, giving the town an identity and a character. So you know when you see this sign, you're, you're, you've entered Amherst and this is what kind of Amherst represents and what's it, what is it all about. So. Um, it has kind of those dimensions um, and, you know, right now there's kind of a mishmash of wayfinding styles within the town. Um, there's, you know, signs that point to parking, which is great, but those don't necessarily match the signs that let you know you're in town center or the, um, you know, kind of state route on route nine, the traffic signs that point to town center. So there's kind of just a variation of styles and the idea is to synthesize that into one cohesive system. That's really interesting to hear about that aesthetic alignment of, you know, those, those signs. So 
I've heard about this project. So now I've been working with the town for just over six years now. And I've been hearing about this project <laughs> a little bit here and there <laughs> since then. And it might predate my, my yeah. history there. So can you talk a little bit about the background of this project yeah. uh, when yeah. it started and how it got to where we are now? Yeah, yeah, certainly. And uh, likewise, it certainly predates me. Um, my, my tenure with the town, I, I, uh, Chris Restrup, the planning director, she's referred to me as kind of the closer who gets to see these projects that have been dwindling for a while and then bring them to hopefully to, to completion. Um, but yeah, certainly my understanding is that uh, it started with a state grant in around 2015 to address the wayfinding system and develop a new design. The select board at the time was in charge of kind of um, along with the planning department and public work staff kind of built this uh, working group, a coalition of interested parties and developed a you know public process to design both the actual signs themselves, but also the whole system thinking about locations and, um, and destinations. Uh, I think there was, you know, various iterations of the design of the sign and it developed over time. Um, and then I think in 2018, 2017, 2018 town meeting allocated um, around $90,000 for the project. And so um, since that's been allocated, we've been kind of just slowly building and the process, building the um, wayfinding system over time, thinking, finalizing locations, um, you know, working with a great, a great designer um, in Northampton, Seth Gregory, who's um, really developed a, 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 a cohesive um, system and design for this for the town and um, you know it's not always simple there's you know permitting to get through both from the sizes of the signs the design of the signs but we're finally at the point now where um, a lot of the the designs have been vetted by the and approved by various committees and boards and now um, just on Monday we presented to town council um, to and the role town council plays is to approve uh, the use of the sign, uh, placing the signs in the public right of way. Um, and so that's where we're at now. So that's kind of the catching us up on the timeline, the history of this project. Now there's a question, um, someone says that there's two signs in the middle of the Triangle Street roundabout. Is, yeah. is this what you're talking about? Is it, re is it related to these signs? Are they gonna be matching? Or can you talk mm -hmm. a little bit about those existing signs? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the sign, there's two signs in the roundabout um, at Triangle Street. Those were paid for and fabricated by the um, Business Improvement District, the, the bid, I believe in 2018. Um, they are, it's certainly related to what we're doing and those signs um, match, uh, are going to match the uh, proposed welcome signs that we have. The colors are a little bit different, but it's the same, the same concept. Um, and so, yeah, I think it'll, people will recognize the wayfinding signs, the welcome signs, um, because they, they do relate to the ones at the roundabout. And, and what, when you're talking about these signs going in and being in the public way, what geographic area are you talking about? Is, is this all over town or are we talking about downtown? Could you speak a little bit about that? Yeah, exactly. Um, so at this point, we're focused on downtown um, and the idea there's a there's a few goals. One is to, you know, when the, I think when this project was first set out in 2015, one of the reoccurring themes was this idea of, um, you know, there's so many shortcuts to get to UMass and that's the major uh, destination for so many people coming to Amherst, both visitors, students, faculty, um, you know, and student, yeah, certainly students. Um, and so the idea is to place these signs at critical locations where, you know, you know, this day and age of GPS, Google Maps is going to send you, you know, down University Drive or, you know, you know, and just bypass down or up Triangle Street, for example, and bypass town center completely. And so the idea is to place these signs in those areas where we know you know, the most efficient route to get to the university might be to turn left. But if people, and if, if that, if people take that route, they're never even going to go through downtown Amherst. 
and know that that really even exists. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so we've had, had a lot of anecdotal comments where people come in through Route 9 and then they say, oh, and they leave and they don't even see the center of town. And, um, you know, they'll say, you'll say, well, did you go downtown? And they'll say, like, I think so. Is that where <laughs> McDonald's is? It's like, yeah. no, that's Hadley. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I thought that was the center of Amherst. And they, <laughs> people don't know, you know, yeah. municipal boundaries and stuff. And so that is to you know you're right ben it's to intercept people and say hey there's a pretty cool downtown just yeah. up the street yeah right yeah if you're staying at a hotel on the, on route nine in hadley you would never really have to go through yeah you think of, of amherst with applebee's and chili's and <laughs> yeah. you know all these great restaurants there but not our great restaurants mm -hmm. so we have a, a live question from the room um Let's see. Everyone recognizes the blue and white public parking signs. I hope those won't be altered for the sake of uniform design. Is that something you can speak to, Ben? Yeah, no, I think the, the blue and white parking signs, they're, they're typically large banners that are high up on the um, uh, poles. And I, as far as I know, there wasn't any intention on replacing those. I think those are effective in, especially for drivers, calling attention to where parking is. Um, you know, I think our, our wayfinding signs, there's also, there's the welcome signs, but then also these post signs that'll, you know, point to different destinations and parking will be included on those signs as well. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the blue and white parking signs have to be taken down as well. Yeah, I think that the blue and white parking signs is a universal language for everybody. Yeah. Wherever you travel, you expect to see a blue and white P with a circle around it yeah. to find your parking. Yeah. I think we'll maintain that. And, and enhance it actually as one of the recommendations from the downtown parking working group study was to make those more visible and easier easier to see mm -hmm. uh, by by uh, drivers so i want to remind folks in the room i do see a hand i'm going to invite ken in just in just one second but uh feel free to use q a or raise your hand to ask your questions live um, i do see that council president lynn griesmer is here so if if she would like to pop in to make any comment um, i do ask her to just raise her hand and we'll pull her in as well so let's see ken if you could unmute and introduce yourself thank you um i'm ken rosenthal i live on sunset avenue and um, there, there's a there's a bit of a conflict of objectives here, I, I know. One is to get people where they want to go who have never been to Amherst before, where they want to go fast and easy. And the other is to bring them to the center of town so that they know there's a center of town. And Paul won't be surprised to know I'm thinking of Hampshire College here. I'm thinking of when, when, we're, when we're back to visiting colleges, the most attractive place will be, of course, UMass, which will bring the most people in for the first time, but also to Amherst College, which of course is right in the town center. And then they're the folks who are coming in wondering where in the world is Hampshire College. Yeah. And so we really got to think about trying to get them there in a comfortable way. At the same time, we want to bring them into town center. So I just put that on the table as a challenge you have. Uh, you know, there are, there are 120,000 tickets sold at Amherst Cinema every year, but I suppose there's no reason to put Amherst Cinema as one of the destinations because most people who buy those tickets have been there before and they, 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 once they get to town center, they'll find it. So you have, you have attractive destinations like that that don't need directions. And then you've got remote destinations like yeah. Hampshire and South Amherst that, that might. That's a good point, Ken, because I think one of the things, I mean, this first phase is to get people to get downtown. And then once you're downtown, we also wanna provide directional to get to where you wanna go once you're downtown. So if you have lunch in town, where is the Eric Carl Museum? You know, where is the Meat Art Museum? Things like that, helping uh, the directional signs. There's, there's multiple, there's three different layers of signs that we have. We have the sort of big welcome signs that are just with the name of Amherst on it. The second is a direct, directional signs that have sort of fins on it that can, you can direct people this way or that. And then the third is sort of information kiosks. And we can talk a little bit more about how SUFA inter, interplays with that. But those are there's multifunctions and we don't wanna have create clutter on our streets either. So we're trying to do this as thoughtfully as possible um, along these, along mm -hmm. during this time. So Ben, you probably thought about that or Brianna, you can talk about that too, obviously. Well, I was gonna say that's a great question to Ken because another, um, another 
person asked, is it just going to be downtown or are we, and Paul mentioned this being a phase of maybe mm -hmm. multiple phases, how are we uh, going to expand that to other, you know, village centers that we're developing? And, and um, so is there any thought around expansion of these wayfinding signs to other areas in town? My understanding is that that's always been the goal um, and it's kind of a phased in project. And so, um, and that, that came up at the town council meeting on Monday, certainly is this idea of, you know, building this identity for the town with these signs and expand, expanding um, the signage, you know, to the village centers, North and South Amherst, certainly East Amherst. Um, so, but I mean, that's not to say that the phase one in downtown isn't going to point to South Amherst, you know, as, as people are leaving downtown, um, going south on 116, you know, I think our thinking is to have signs that point to Hampshire, you know, Eric Carl, Yiddish Book Center, uh, you know, destination south to let people know, you know, again, their GPS might tell them to turn right or left on Route 9, mm -hmm. but hey, mm -hmm. look, look at all these great options in South Amherst, so. I have a question for Ken. So in, in Amherst, there are signs that say downtown Amherst and there are signs that, <laughs> that point to town center. How do you think of downtown or town center, Ken? And what do you think is the more familiar lexicon for people as they think, as they're trying to find a destination? If you go back far enough to Alan Torrey, he would call the middle of town uptown. Yeah. Alan Torrey would say, I'm going uptown when he's moving, coming from Bay Road to, to Hastings. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a very good question, Paul, because in talking with some of my neighbors, the name town center keeps coming up among some of them as the favored way to describe the middle of town. But that may be a losing battle if everybody talks about downtown and fewer and fewer people talk about town center. I like town center because to me, center, it, 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 at, at that intersection, that's the middle of things. That's the center of things. The intersection I'm talking about is South and North Pleasant Street, Amity and, and, mm -hmm. uh, and Main Street. So if, if you ask my personal preference, it would be town center. Mm -hmm. But I think you need to ask others than I. Yeah, because so, I'll, I'll, so one of the anecdotal things was someone said town center sounds like a shopping mall, you know, like you're at Nat the Natick town center. Oh, I'm going to the mall. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I agree with Ken. I, I feel like it implies some sort of heart of you know our community, the center of things. Um, and some people in the room are responding. I like town center too. Town center is uh, New Englandy, which I, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I love that word. So, um, so it looks like in this room right now, town center has it. But what does Ben think? I, you know, growing up in Amherst, I always said I'm going. I'm going to town. You know, and uh, you know, I guess, and so. I don't know really what that means. We're not just going to say town on there, but town center, especially in relation to the village centers, I think that is a good distinction. Um, so yeah, I think I would lean towards town center, but um, the ones that are up at yeah. Triangle Street now say downtown this they, way, yeah. right? Yeah, they say um, downtown because so. the the bid is the downtown Amherst. You know, everything they, they use the term downtown. So yeah, I think we need a poll. I think I'm yeah. going to have to spin up a poll for the. Um, that actually would be interesting, yeah. For this. Yeah. And but but, but it also has to do with what outside, it's really for, not for us, right? Because <laughs> we know what we're saying, whether we say town center or downtown, but it's for people who've never been here before, what's going to help them understand yeah. where to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> interesting debate so i guess we can't close the book on that one just yet it's for those new yorkers <laughs> yeah <Sarah. laughs> yes i see that we've had another comment downtown is new yorky and and it to me implies direction um mm -hmm. you know yeah. which, which way you need to move and it's um, and i know I'm, I'm not sure i don't want to monopolize this but it's also more than just the business area it's where the town hall is mm -hmm. and uh, it's where the library is and so center Town town sounds more like a shopping destination. Town center sounds more like a destination for government and business and all of those things together. Mm -hmm. Thank you for thank you for giving me this time to talk. Thank you, Ken. It sounds like Ken and I are firmly in the town center <laughs> team camp. So I'm gonna get some t-shirts for us uh, <laughs> made. So I have another question here. Um, will the tiny white signs at conservation properties and trails be made more obvious and legible for people 
in a moving vehicle at some point, um, maybe not related to wayfinding, but perhaps any, any thoughts or comments on that? So, so that's a standard sign that, that, we, that they actually the conservation staff build, they make themselves. They have a little system in place to build them so they can, when they get stolen, they just replace them themselves. They're not store-bought or anything like that. Um, and I don't, I don't think they're really designed to be to catch your eye. It's just a, it's just a designation. But the one thing we did talk about once we standardize, if the council is in agreement with these, the wayfinding sign system that we've presented, uh, is to extend that to recreation areas like Mill River, Groff Park. That we sort of have a mishmash of signage and mm -hmm. trying to unify the image of the town of Amherst. It's a sort of, it's practically, it's more as much a branding thing as a wayfinding thing yeah. for us. And I think, I don't know if folks have seen the design. I think it's really, really great looking. I think they did a really wonderful job yeah. of designing I it. Can, I can pull that up now if you'd like. Sure. Yeah, that'd be great, Ben. I think since it's such a visual project, if um, you don't mind pulling that up and I'll mm -hmm. take a second to just say, um, you know, the, the, the pilot project we're doing, some of the informational signs right. Paul mentioned earlier, we did work closely with the planners um, based off of the, the wayfinding designs intentionally to make sure that those uh, were in line. And uh, we have opportunities to expand the, the design of those um, signs. Right now they display public health information, but it's not mm -hmm. to say that in the future, if the signs are kept, we could incorporate um, more wayfinding elements to, to a map or something like that. Yeah. Okay, so tell us what we're seeing right here. Yeah, exactly. So the this is the welcome sign. So there will be four of these in, in phase one placed at kind of key gateways um, around town center or downtown, whatever we call it. Um, <laughs> so we have this kind of like uh, dark brown color with then a uh, slightly lighter brown for the welcome faded into the back with the town seal. And then Amherst, uh, in Massachusetts really pop with the uh, with the white sli slightly off white that was another point of debate was what what type of white do we have there and then this town center panel will point uh you know whatever direction you're coming from towards town center that actually not, isn't the town seal it's the town that's shield. right shield because oh, okay. it's, what's on, it's, what's on, it's what's on the town flag it yes. oh good to relatively know. new um in the last six or seven years ago or so. Yeah. And then likewise, um, this is the, this uh, joins the wel uh, welcome signs. These are called the directional post signs. And these are meant to be, you know, they're large enough font and uh, height to be viewed, you know, from a moving vehicle, but also um, small enough in scale to not be out of, out of scale with pedestrian and cyclists downtown. Um, and so, the idea is that you know the welcome signs would bring you to the center of town. Here I am using all these different terms: downtown, town center. I'm I'm all confused now. The uh, welcome signs would bring you to the center, and then once you're there, um, the these directional post signs direct you to various destinations with within the town center. You know, both actually directing you there and just letting you know they exist. Like something like the West Cemetery is tucked behind. A building and, is, and isn't really obvious, but that's an incredibly val historic place with incredible historic and cultural value for the town and with the Dickinson Museum as well, Jones Library, Kendrick Park. So these are just a sample of some of the destinations we might put on the signs, but just to point out um, what it looks like. And then lastly, as Paul mentioned, these two types of kiosks, the en route and the arrival kiosks, same thing, just a little bit bigger for the arrival kiosks. Those would have maps um, with destinations and cycling and walking times to those places. And this is where we could have, you know, maybe a, a map for town center, but then also a blown up map of the town to show where we are in relation to destinations in South Amherst, North Amherst, East Amherst, and other types of places. I think so those vi visuals yeah. really help, Ben. Um, yeah. So, you know, I just want to say we're getting close to our 30 minutes. I know yeah. we could probably keep talking about this for a long time because there's a lot of interest. Um, what what would you say to people who are interested in, you know, A, learning more about the project or B, wanting to follow along with next steps and timelines? Uh, where, where should they tune in? Yeah. Um, so our immediate next steps, um, the town council referred um, this project to the TSO, the Town Services and Outreach Subcommittee of Town Council. 
And we're going to be working closely with TSO to develop the wayfinding system further, talk about locations, and getting the, ultimately their recommendation to town council for the approval of the signs. So, you know, I, I think uh, that process is hopefully going to happen, you know, late, late uh, winter into spring. And I think um, there's a recommendation uh, for May, uh, by May 3rd was the suggestion. Um, and so, yeah, we'll be moving through the process with TSO and folks can keep track of those meetings. Um, I was talking with Brianna about possibly putting some of this information also on the planning department webpage, just have the signs up there and a little blurb about the project overall. Um, so you can look for that uh, coming up on the planning department's website as well. And we're going to definitely include the poll town yeah. center versus downtown. Absolutely. Uh, and I have to say, as when I was an undergrad at UMass, even though we were north of town center, we always called it uptown. We we're going oh, uptown. Did. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if that was, that's aging me maybe, but um, <laughs> we might have to put that on the list too. So I do want to just thank um, Ben Brager for joining us today. And if you have follow-up questions about this project, feel free to email us at info at amherstma.gov and I'll get you connected to the correct person. Um, Paul, anything you want to leave folks with before we wrap up? No, I just think um, this is going to be a tough couple of weeks, I think, because it, the way we understand with the um, challenge at UMass is that it takes two weeks, a good, a solid two weeks to get something like this out under control. If we do the, do it, you know, they said, if you, if you hit it hard early and hold on with these shutdown, you'll get it under control faster. So that's what our mission is right now. Great. Thank you for that reminder. Um, and I'll just leave, you know, if people are concerned or have questions related to COVID vaccines, anything like that, please call us at 413-259-2425. Um, we have people ready and uh, staffed up to help answer your questions. And one last comment that came in, the signs look great, um, Sarah says. So thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. All right, so we are going to wrap up and we'll be back next Thursday with the architects from Kuhn Riddle, uh, Superintendent of Public Works, Guilford Mooring to discuss nice. the North Amherst Library Project. Good. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Thanks Thank everybody. Thank you everyone.